Welcome to the Church of Thomas, Food Prohibitions 1231-10. Now, in our modern Western world, we enjoy foods from all over the world. We mix and match, we eat milk with meat, we eat shellfish with meat, uh, we, we have things out of season, we have things that are from totally different species all mixed in the same dish. For us, this is not a big deal, but to some cultures and religious groups, it is still a prohibition, uh, specifically vegetarians. They won't eat what has had fur on it, but they have lots of variations of kinds of vegetarian. Some will eat fish. I guess it doesn't have fur on it. Uh, some things won't unless it, if it has a brain, they won't eat it. If it's a meat, they won't eat it. Uh, if it's an egg, some of them will eat it. Milk, it's a byproduct, but it's not a meat. Some of them will eat it, some of them won't. For the Jews, it's pork, and there's a cultural bias against um, eating pork because of a lot of other cultural reasons. And for the same reason, the Muslims adapted the same thing, because it was a wasteful way of producing food. Now, God never restricted what it was that we could eat. <clears throat> the things that were put down as rules were meant to protect people through a secular society. But by giving it the power of God's word, it was enforceable. However, when Jesus came along, it totally removed the food prohibitions, even though it took quite a while because most of his people were very strict Jewish adherence. So a lot of the things that they did while eating uh, were, were different than what Jesus was proposing. Here are some verses that might help out. In the Reconciler Gospel of Thomas, verse 6, I'm only going to read the last half because the rest is about a different subject. When you go to another land, be respectful of their customs. Then if you accept, if they accept you, eat what they offer you. This acknowledges their act of hospitality. Heal anyone with them who is in need of healing. What you put in your mouth will not hurt your soul, but what you say can poison your soul if it is not true or said with malice. Then we have Genesis, and this is 9-3. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you, and just as I gave you the green plants, I give you everything else. The last verse is Mark 7, 18 and 19. He said to them, Then you do then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from the outside can de cannot defile, since it enters not the heart but the stomach and goes out in the sewer? Thus he declared all foods to be clean. There are still people in Christian denominations that restrict food consumptions to certain days or certain mixtures. Uh, the Catholics still adhere to the idea of only eating seafood, uh, specifically finned fish, during uh, their Friday celebrations just before Passover, uh, before the Sabbath starts. But all of these restrictions are human-made or from a human society dealing with a disease problem. It is time for all of the people of the world understand that the restrictions that they're placing on may be secular laws, but they are not God's laws. God never limited us to what can sustain us, whether it's a grub, a stalk of wheat, or a cow. God bless the whole world, no exceptions. Angel Eliza.